Hello, I'm, I hope you stay tuned and, and I've been following along with me and been doing these films of the end time teachings, working ourselves backwards. And I pray you've enjoyed it and you're staying with me and uh, following along and write these scriptures down. So, as you can see in the other films, I pray you watched them and we're working way, our way backwards uh, from the very far, far end uh, to where we are working towards the scriptures to what we presently wait for to be uh, fulfilled when the resurrection comes, uh, which we began with the, in the, the second video of Begin Teaching Scriptures, uh, that's evident that uh, the resurrection will take place uh, before the tribulation of the seven years will begin. Whether they like it or not, there was three royal harvests that the great king was to keep. And you can find this in Exodus. And Christ will keep those feasts in the kingdom of heaven with the royal saints and we still have two resurrections left to go of the royal saints and these scriptures will verify of what they're not seeing and paying attention to them too we're hitting the highlights uh, without doing the entire revelations and all of Daniel and all of Malachi and everything we're hitting the highlights so stay with me so let's continue in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 1. It says, Blow ye the trumpet, and sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. You see how these scriptures are in verification of what we've already been bringing and yet we've got a whole lot more to verify the day of the Lord and, and coming against the inhabitants of the world and showing it is clearly the whole world, not just Jerusalem. Joel chapter 2, verse 2, a day of darkness and a day of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. Here we go again with that thick clouds and darkness and, and the morning spirit as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and strong. There hath not been ever the like, neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Joel 2, 3. A fire devoureth before them, and from behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. Joel 2, 4. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and, and of horsemen, so shall they run. Joel 2, 5. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of, of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Joel 2, 6, Before their face the people shall be, be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. Watch who these people are of what this is describing in that coming. Joel 2, 7, They shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Verse 8, neither shall one thrust one another. It's talking about the angels here, okay? Not those that stand there he's riding upon. They shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon a sword, they shall not be wounded. You're not going to kill a Lord's angel that's coming from heaven. You ain't going to do it. You don't have, they ain't got that power. Joel 2, 9. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the horses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. Joel 2, 10. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble, and the, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. There it is again. Joel 2, 11. 
and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. He's talking about the angels. For his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide in it? Job chapter 3 verse 11. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Scissor, cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Job 3.12 Let the heathen be weakened, and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Job 3.12 let the heathen be weakened and come up. Uh oh, I already did that. Sorry, that. Let's go to verse 13. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Remember, the whole world's gone filthy. They've all worshipped the beast at the very. Those that's left upon the earth at that time. At the very end. Job 3.14, multitudes and multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Job 3.15, the sun and the moon shall be darkened. Here we go. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. Notice it always verifies itself. Job 3.16, the Lord shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall quake. Remember we telling you about that stuff rumbling back together? Okay. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Job 3.17 So shall you know that I am the Lord, your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through it anymore. You see, he's returning with the saints to take the throne of David, riding upon them. Upon <laughs> taking the temple and cleansing it by his presence with his saints. Mike verse one or chapter one verse two. Hear all ye people, hearken, O earth, and all that there therein is. And let the Lord God be witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. Verse 3. For behold, the Lord cometh forth out of his place, and will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth. Verse 4. And the mountains shall be molted under him, and the valleys shall be as a cliff, as wax before the fire. And as the waters that are poured down a steep place. Well, they don't know where those waters coming from. <laughs> Job 2.30 And I will show, show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Job 2.31 The sun shall be turned into darkness. Here we go again. And the moon and the blood. You see the verifying in twos and threes. Each scripture has not been doubled. I may have spoken twice accidentally, but there is reference to every one of these scriptures in twice and thrice, and sometimes even four. And the moon and the blood, before the great terrible day of the Lord come. Revelation, let's go to Revelation 16, verse 1. And I heard another voice out of the temple saying to the seven, seven angels, Go your ways. And pour out the veils of the wrath of God upon the earth. Revelation 16, 2. And the first went and poured out his veil upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and a grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast. And upon them which worshipped his image. This is not talking about the royal saints, people. Revelation 16, 3. And the second angel poured out his veil upon the sea. we got a sea around this world. Well, it's practically all mostly water than land, but yet we got a lot of land and countries all around the world. Poured it upon the sea. And it became as blood as a, a, of a dead man. 
and every living soul died in the sea. Notice, this is a living soul. It's not talking about all the fishes and everything else. A fish ain't got a soul. Notice, there's people in ships out there. Ships and submarines and battle carriers, whatever, they're all out. There's men in the sea. Died. Ow. Revelation 16, 4. And the third angel poured out his veil upon the rivers and the fountains of waters, and they became blind. Uh -oh. They're not going to like those two prophets back in, in the end down there in this tribulation. They're not, oh man, they ain't going to like those fellows at all. Because the Lord's going to give them blood to drink. Now we'll get into those two prophets and who they are and the scriptures verifying it that everybody has trouble seeing who they are. We'll get into that later. Revelation 16, 5. And I heard an angel of the water, water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was, and shalt be, because thou hast judged thus. Revelation 16, 6. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Of in blood. Revelation 16, 7. And I heard another another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. Revelation 16, 8. And the fourth angel poured out his veil upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Whoa! They ain't going to like it down here. Revelation 16, 9. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God. This is not talking about the saints. This is those that's take, take, taken the mark. Which have power over these plagues. You see, yeah. And they repented not to give him glory. Revelation 16.10 And the fifth angel poured out his veil upon the seat of the beast. Guess where he's reigning from? Not the temple. You know, the one they're going to build and start doing sacrifices and then he's going to stop the sacrifices. You see, they're still waiting on the red heifers and all this other stuff to be... And they got everything ready for that temple, trying to make a mock-up temple now. I seen a video the other day, yesterday uh, of, of, of doing a practice temple so they can teach people the priesthood on how to carve up the, 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 the lamb and the bullock and all that stuff and do this, some sprinkling. But they ain't got, they, you see, they ain't got no temple. The Ark of the Covenant's not back in there. They, but they got an altars out, fr out, out in front uh, uh, of the temple. Hey, they're not, they will go back into sacrifice, those stubborn Hebrews and Jews. Until they figure out that he breaks that covenant, tells everybody that there is no such thing as God. I mean, at first he's telling everybody he is their God. And he, you know, uh-huh. Revelation 16, 11, and blasphemed the God of heaven uh -oh, because of their pains and sores and repented not of their deeds. Revelation 16, 12, and the sixth angel poured out his veil upon the great river Euphrates. Well, here we go again. They ain't got a clue how many times that river Euphrates dried up, and that's how the armies came in. <laughs> it's going to happen again, people. And the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Whew. We've got a lot of armies fixing to come against, against the city. They want their power back, people, but it's too late. They will reinstate all the old catapults and the old armor battlements. That Antichrist is going to be able to shut down any, any, anybody's electronics, cars, planes, whatever, He's going to be able to shut it down and have control of all, elect all the electronics, all the satellites. Hey, that fire coming down that they say that he's going to be able to do. It says everything this man does is, is, is a, a deception. 
So let's just see the prophet thinking back, going, oh, I see him casting down fire out of heaven. How about those laser beams they're able to shoot out of the sky of, of the satellites and shoot it at a pinpoint? Oh, there's your fine. How could the prophet back then describe something that would be uh, of our technology, but yet it says the false prophet will do everything in deception, fooling the people. Revelation 16, 3, And I saw three unclean spirits like the frogs come up out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Revelation 16, 14, For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle, of the great day of God Almighty. He's going to, remember he said he's going to come in the glory of himself and the glory of his Father. He's going to have his Father's Spirit <laughs> and the authority. Revelation 16, 16. And he gathered them together into a place called the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Man, they still don't know how many times that Armageddon took place back then. Just like the Gog and Magog. War after war after war after war. Battles after battles took place out there. But we got one final Armageddon. All these nations and powers and kingdoms, they, they, they want to take their power back and try to take the anti out. That's why they're all gathering against Jerusalem people. That's why they're gathering against Jerusalem because they and all armies and nations going against them. Look at every nation around the world. We've got just about every nation and language and tongue here in America, let alone Australia and Canada and, 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 and you know all these people living around the world, but they're of a different nation, but even though they're in another nation living and making, you know, the, 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 the tribes and nations have been scattered around the world, whether they are the Gentiles or whether they are the Hebrews. And uh, here, where you go, it, you can see all these nations intermixed with all these different people that scattered abroad to go to, to go live. We got people from all over the world that that's, that's attached themselves to America and become part of our armies. The Mexicans, the Cherokee Indians. Well, I mean, we got all these nations. You can just start thinking and naming. That's part of our armies wherever they're sent. Now we got the women in the military. Okay. All right. Ain't getting into all that. Bless their hearts. Lord, take care of them. Revelation 16, 17. And the seventh angel poured out his veil into the air. Uh oh And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. Revelation 16, 8. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake. Such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. Uh-huh. They seem to think the earthquake's just going to happen in Jerusalem. <laughs> you better think again. But it does record the great one. In Jerusalem, the Mount of Olives, that's theirs. Wait until the rest of the world rumbles and trumbles and all that ocean just starts slamming and, and the, the land's slamming back together when he takes the throne. <laughs> <coughs> Revelation 16, 19. And the great city was divided into three parts. Watch this. Three parts. And the city of the nations fell and great Babylon came into remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath watch this Revelation 16 20 and every island fled away uh oh ain't Hawaii way out there oh man, Lord take care of them those that be taken, be taken. Those that be left, will be left. But we're talking about, man, 
says in verse 20, every island fled away and the mountains were not found. You see, hello, remember, you, you, everybody says, oh, I don't know of any such stuff. Well, hey, I can bring the threes. I can bring the threes. And the mountains were not even found. And we got the Rocky Mountains, the Appalachian Mountains. Oh, we got the most beautiful mountains around the world. Uh-oh, look out. Revelation 16, 21. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven. Every stone about the weight of a talent. Oh, man. That's some pretty big stones. Stars, asteroid, you know, whatever you want to call it. And men blaspheme God because of the plague of the hail. Remember the plagues that's being poured out with the prophets? They ain't going to like those fellas. For the plague thereof was exceedingly great. Now I'm going to put you back in Zechariah chapter 1 verse 14. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hastily, ha hasted greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. Verse 15. That day is a day of wrath, a day of double trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of d darkness and gloominess, and a day of clouds and thick, there it is again, thick darkness. So I said, Zachariah, forgive me, that's Zeph Zephaniah, please forgive me, Zephaniah. Because here's Zephaniah chapter 1, 16 in the next verse. Please forgive me. My bifocals. Verse 16, a day of the trumpet, an alarm against the fenced cities, against the high towers. Don't you know that's the nations? The powers of the nations, the kingdoms and powers. Whew. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 17. And I will bring distress upon men, and they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dung. There's verification again. They're not even going to get to get buried. Remember the boom when he shows up? Zephaniah 1.18 Neither their, their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. Zephaniah 3.8 Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. My determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. It's going to be restructured all the way, slammed back together. That's a lot of oceans and bodies of, of land and ocean slaps and slamming back the world is round people we all know that that wasn't didn't take a scientist to figure hey hold up never mind zachariah 14 1 behold the day of the lord cometh as thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee uh oh i pulled up too far please forgive me where it go there it is i'm sorry i hit the wrong button the spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. He's talking about. Okay. You're not going to need your gold and silver. If you're returning with Christ. <laughs> What's that gold going to do you then? Zechariah 14.3 Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Zechariah 14.4 And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. Here we go. 
which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and towards the west. Hello? And there shall be a great, a, a very great valley. Half of the mountain shall, uh, shall remove towards the north, and half of it is going to roll shall towards the north and half of it towards the south. And there's that split right all the way through the eastern gate, people. Guess what's sitting on the other side of that gate when you look up and you see a stupid golden dome? Well, whatever. They know nothing about this earthquake that's going to fall flat into the ground. They don't like that stuff. Everybody says, oh, that temple's going to be there. Oh, it's, it'll be built. But they know not where. They still fight over the old mountain. How's they going to get all these Muslims out of there? Well, I've heard some scenarios about all these bombs going off and Syria hitting and Lebanon hitting Israel and Israel going back and smacking Iran with their missiles and their missiles and their missiles and, and kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. I'm not going to say that there's something ain't going to happen in, in that sort. There's bound to be some bloodshed come out of, out of all these, these, these feuds and, 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 and overtaking the powers and always wanting to take Israel out. Well, we're talking about an earthquake that's going to go right through the eastern gate. The Mount of Olives is going to split all the way to the Mediterranean, people. When it says the lands of air, uh, well, we'll go through it. It'll be here. Hold on. That's what the ocean's going to come slamming back, rushing back in, cleansing the blood. Uh, I'll give you answers. I'll bring you scriptures. Just stay with me. They, all, they always fight over the old Temple Mount. You can't blame them. That's where two of the temples, the royal temples, were at when they were ripped, ripped down. All right, Zechariah 14:5, and ye shall flee to the valley of mountains, for the valley of mountains shall reach unto Azel. That's all the way to the Mediterranean Sea, people. It's ripping right through the eastern gate. All those big skyscrapers and right there on in, in the, the new West Jerusalem where everybody's got their little pretty, pretty city and real highways and stuff like that. You think 9-11 was bad? All of us. It was bad. It got the whole world's attention. Wait until this happens. They ain't gonna like being in that stuff, in them towers. Or in all that right there. Anywhere. The whole world's gonna rumble. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzzah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, watch this, and all the saints with the... He's talking about all the harvest riding with, with Christ, with the, the authority and power of his Father. And the Spirit. Look at Titus chapter 2, verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus chapter 2, verse 14. Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, uh, zealous of good works. Zechariah 14, 6. And it shall come to pass in that day that light shall not be clear nor dark. Here we go again. It's see, verifying. Zechariah 14, 7. But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that in evening time it shall be light. That's a pretty bright coming, people. Zechariah 14, 8. And it shall be in that day that, watch this, Watch this. Watch this. Oh, you, the, the, the preachers, watch it. You, you know, you just skip right over it. You let it fly right over your heads. And it shall be in that day that living water shall go out from Jerusalem. Hello. Half of them from the, towards the former sea and half of them towards the hinder sea. In summer, and in winter shall it be. This is 
busted the, eye, or the, the thinkings of all these people, and they're going, what? How can it be winter and summer at the same time? Well, the world's round, people. You know, when we're in the dead of our winter uh, over here, you know, you got a, you got an equator. You know, just because we got snow on the ground in the middle of winter, it don't always snow. It, it may be looking like a spring day out there. But yet you've got the reverse as the seasons roll and the world turns within the months and, you know, and, and, and now they've got, you know, dead of winter when we're down here having a summer. Hello? Just because it's declared the winter months or the, the summer months, that don't mean you might not have a cold night and you get down below zero. He's talking about the world here without saying it. In winter and summer shall it be. The world. And half of them towards the hinder sea and right there, right there towards the former sea. Where's all these waters going? They don't even look at the layouts of Israel and, and the mountain ranges and the valleys and hills and see where the creeks and valleys go. Jerusalem was a lot lower than the mountains in, above it. Waters come down the mountains, people, not going back up the mountains. Especially when you've got elevations and elevations and elevations that's way above it and it overlooks the people below and all of the inhabitants would be is declared Jerusalem, like like Kansas City and Chicago and all these suburbs. You see, well, they go to a suburb, but they say, I'm going to KC, I'm going to Chicago. But yet they're in a suburb outside that's been adapted and, and claimed to be part of the same as Jerusalem and all those lands below. Whew. Zechariah 14, 9, And the Lord shall be king over all the earth, in that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. Zechariah 14, 11. Scoot on down. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. Let's skip down to Zechariah 14, 20. In that day there shall be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord, and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Wow. You see all that other stuff in the middle of Zechariah? It's talking about back then, back then, back then. They're not going to be doing any sacrificing because when he steps upon the Mount of Olives, people, this begins the millennium. And guess what? A thousand years be as a day, and a day be as a thousand years of the Lord. We're going to be in his time frame, people. His time frame. You don't put on the likeness of Christ. You don't put on a new body and... and and a white robe, and he's taking sin away from you all the way, you're going to serve the king. You're going to say, pick me, Lord. Hey, you got something you want me to do? Pick me, Lord. I, I know what to do this time. They ain't going to be doing any old sack. All right. The wrong. They'll be doing sacrifices during the, before the uh, tribulation begins, the seals, and then into the tribulation. They will be doing that. The stubborn eyebrows, Jews and Hebrews and whoever that just wouldn't hear the Lord or His Son. So there will be a temple. Uh huh. They just don't know for a fact where. They're all speculating where they believe it has to be. I'll bring scriptures later. Your mouth's going to come wide open when you see it. They haven't even chased down the waters where the waters is even flowing from and where they were standing for all these waters to be flowing crystal clear waters down through all these valleys and cities and towns will be totally flooded out and over over, over flooded from the, the, the waters that breaks forth. <laughs> they don't go back up the mountain, people. They come down the mountain. They eventually go all the way to the sea, just like the Jordan does all the way down. Yep, goes down near the Gulf of Aqaba. <laughs> all right, another some more teaching. All right, listen to me. Let's look at Joel chapter 3, verse 18. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk. And all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters. 
and a fountain shall come forth out of the house of the Lord and shall water the valley of Shittim. <laughs> they don't even chase down Shittim. And where it's going to flow over, over into, 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 into Shittim. Oh, it's just a name under there. Of course, we got our Bibles, look at the maps, they look like a bunch of kids' droids. Get some real maps out, people, and see the valleys and the terrains that can't flow from downtown Jerusalem, people. Those waters that's going to flow all the way over there into that valley of Shittim, that has to come from above. <laughs> and guess where it says it's coming forth from? The house of the Lord. They ain't got a clue. They speculated all this time because the Lord's going to keep them fighting over the old mount. <laughs> oh, goodness sakes. I'm not going to give it out just yet. No, i got some more teachings to do. But maybe you want to pray about it this time before you, you go through your all your fancy little end-time people teachings. Maybe you pray over it first. Talk to the Lord and ponder on it, Lord. Is this guy leading me astray? Is he just making it all up? I didn't get this out of somebody's seminar. I didn't get this out of somebody else's teachings. I didn't get this out of uh, out of the Bible college. I got it out of the Bible. Will you believe me? Because this is what I'm using in this whole presentation. Let me read this again. Job chapter 3 verse 18. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine and the hills shall flow with milk and all the rivers of Judah shall, shall flow with waters. And a fountain shall come forth out of the house of the Lord. And shall water the valley of Shittim. Let's look at Matthew chapter 13, verse 38. The words of Jesus Christ. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Verse 39. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world and the reapers. And that's what we're talking about. Him returning with all of his angels upon the inhabitants of the world. In this part, Matthew 13, chapter 13, verse 40. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of, the, of, this, of this world. He's talking about this world as it is, as it, as it existed the way it is. It's going to be restructured and rumbled together. And all that water and ocean slamming to flatten out. Would to be no more mountains. No islands fled away. It's not just an expression, people. It's a fact. Matthew 13, 41. The Son of, the Son of Man shall send forth His angels, and they shall gather out of His kingdom all things that, that offend and them that do iniquity. Matthew 13, 42, And shall cast them into the furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Remember, they get their own little wretching to stand before the seat, the seat of Christ when He cleanses the temple by His very presence with all of the saints. You got the sheep, the old stubborn goats, Matthew 13, 43. Then shall righteousness shine forth as a sun in the kingdom of their Father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Revelations 18, 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Revelations 
chapter 18, 6, reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled to her double. Revelation 18, 7, how much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she has, for she saith in her heart, I sit as a queen and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. You want to bet? Oh, they're going to see it. And they ain't going to like it in the end. Revelations 18, 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Wow. That one went over their heads. Death and mourning and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Let's look at Isaiah 26, 21. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Look at Psalms chapter 9, verse 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forgot God. Look at Isaiah chapter 34, verse 1. Come near, ye nations, to hear and to hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. Verse 2. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Maybe we need to take a break and I can refresh myself so I can know exactly where we want to begin right here and how I want to present it. So let's take a break, and may you all join in and come back and, and follow along. And I pray the teachings have already maybe helped you with some kind of insight. Pray, go talk to the Lord. Ponder on it. Search your heart. We've got plenty of scriptures to bring. And may you all be blessed. Stay tuned. Stop this thing. <laughs>